First, though, a scar on our police. That's the verdict on former Met officer David Carrick, who has been jailed for a minimum of 30 years after pleading guilty to 49 charges, including 24 counts of rape over almost two decades. And this morning, it's left many asking, how can we possibly rebuild trust in our police? Well, with me now is Mina Smallman. You will remember her daughters were murdered in 2020. An ordeal made even worse after police officers shared photographs of their bodies on WhatsApp. And former Chief Constable Sue Fish, who experienced misogyny herself during her time in the force. Sue, when you look at this monster, it's, um, it's almost beyond belief. I mean, he was, he was hiding in plain sight. He was, he was almost allowed to get away with these crimes for decades. It's, um, it's no wonder that people are questioning the whole of the police force. I quite agree, and good morning, Lorraine. Um, he was hiding in, pl in plain sight. In fact, he wasn't even hiding. Um, and that's the trouble in policing. So often, those dots that need joining up aren't even recognised as dots. Um, so there is something fundamental that needs to go on because it jeopardises completely the trust that the public need to have in their police service. And there are so many good police officers out there whose um, everyday brilliant actions go completely unrecognised and unheralded because of people like Carrick. It's absolutely disgusting. It really is. And the thing about it, and, and Mina, you know, we've talked about this before. Sadly, you're not surprised by this. No. You know, that's the thing. It, it, we can be shocked. Yeah. But it's almost like it's not, it's not surprising. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I really think until we find out who the line managers were, who were the gatekeepers, right. until we kind of name and shame them, it will continue. But I think we've got them on the run now you know, almost like the Jimmy Savile. I said outside um, the Old Bailey, if you have been assaulted or abused by the police, tell now, we will believe you. So I think we're, we're people are daring there's to change. come forward. It feels like there is change. Sadly, there seems to be more of these monsters in the pipeline. We're going to be hearing more about that. Um, but it's a thing again, and, and you know, from your point of view, the, the ordeal that you are still going through, obviously, it's that thing about <clears throat> ex getting the trust back with the police. Because as Sue said, there are amazing police officers doing brilliant jobs every single day. Of yeah. course there are, and we, we should recognise that. And they're as appalled by this monster as, as, as anyone else is. Mm. But getting the trust back, it's difficult, isn't it? It's going to be a hard, long road. Yeah, I mean, I think we're a long way off from women feeling safe yeah. if a police officer approaches them, especially if it's two males. Uh, and I'm sorry about that, but the reality is women are going to be nervous mm. and no woman should ever be interviewed by a male police officer at any point in, in the station. I think we now have to safeguard the women mm. by putting in place the things that we did in schools. You know, you, you didn't have a male with a, a, a teenage girl on their own and it kind of safeguarded both sides mm. of it. Mm. Um, but I think that's the kind of thing that's necessary now. It's interesting. And, and Sue, the, the, the response from the Met Police is an interesting one. They're saying, um, this is from Barbara Gray, the, the Met's lead for professionalism. She says, more detail is going to be provided about the cruel and abusive nature of Carrick's crimes and the impact on the tremendously brave women who came forward. We let them down. We failed to identify a man in our ranks who carried out the most awful offences and will root out those who corrupt our integrity. Good words, a very powerful mm -hmm. statement. Sue, it, will it happen? I hope so. Um, I am a perpetual optimist, but this area in terms of violence against women by men and particularly by police officers is something that takes more than brave words and it needs real action. And it's not just about investigating those or learning how to see the dots that I talked about, you know, when women come forward and report. And it's so hard for women to come forward to report. Mm. So I think so much work fundamentally needs to be done to enable women in particular, but those who've been abused, particularly by police officers, but by anyone, to come forward and to report in confidence and to be supported. And I also think that there needs to be some fundamental 
change in the culture, the way the values um, of policing are manifested. Because what's happened is there is a real toxic nature mm. to um, much of policing's culture, mm. which has enabled people like, like Carrick to flourish and to perpetuate um, the awful harm and awful trauma. Mm. Um, and sadly, there are far too many like him who are both still in the service across the country. This isn't just a London issue. Mm. Um, and it's about changing how policing is, uh, police officers are recruited, looking at conscientiousness, empathy, compassion, those really critical skills and characteristics um, and values that mean that people are less likely, as it's well de demonstrated, um, to be corrupt, whether in a more conventional sense or in a sexual sense. Mm -hmm. And that is fundamental. Um, so otherwise, policing will be forever just dealing with those who commit the most appalling offences um, as you know, from their own ranks. Exactly. It's got to change. You're absolutely right. It's the whole culture that's got to change. Other police officers can no longer turn a blind eye. And I know that you are working really hard, Mina, to make this change. Yes. Are you feeling that change is happening? I mean, it's, it's not going to happen overnight, yeah, clearly. No. But you, you do feel that things are getting a little yeah. bit better, hopefully. Well, it's, it's people are now calling it out. Right. But at the moment, we shouldn't be relying on the tenacity of victims to, to kind of storm yeah. the gates sure. because they have to repeat and repeat and repeat and they're fobbed off. Um, so, you know, what needs to happen is if you are in the police force and you are what I call a good cop, yeah. if you do not call it out, you are enabling. Yes. You know, we cannot have... Um, police officers going to report behaviour and, you know, the supervisor is saying, oh, do you really want to pursue this? Mm. You know, he's quite a good guy, you know. Mm. That all this kind of good guy, this man's name, Carrick, that his colleagues called him, says it all, really. Yeah. Um, and I urge people to, to look at that name. And how can you go through and work with somebody. And this man, they knew about him and they gave him a gun. Ugh, it, it, it makes no sense at all. You'd like to hope with the, the, with the <clears> new, <throat> new people in charge at the top that things will change. Mina, I know you're going to continue to campaign. You're not, you are not going away quietly. No. There is no way that's happening. No. You're obviously going to honour your girls later this year. I think June yeah. 11th, there's going to be a special yes. event for yes. them. St Paul's Cathedral um, at 6pm. There'll be a service and it's, it will be three years um, that my girls were murdered and I'm calling it, it's time. Mm. I want to know what's changed in those three years. If you look at, you know, Sue Everard, um, Sarah yeah. Everard and yeah. this carrot case, um, it's not changing quick enough. Mm -hmm. So it's not just remembering my girls, it's going to be for all families uh, who have lost women and girls to acts of violence. Right. It's going to be a celebration of life, their life, because it was during COVID, the funerals for these young women were not the kind of... It wouldn't have been done in the same no, way. The numbers, yeah. you know, it was very stilted. So it's a celebration of life, but we are going to be saying to the government, what have you done? I want legislation in place that protects women and girls so that it doesn't matter what government goes in or out, it's there. The legislation's there. They have yeah. to do it. Yeah. It's a wonderful <clears> idea, Mia. <throat> it really is. I wish you all the best with that. And Sue, as always, thank <clears> you <throat> for joining us. And I would love to hear your thoughts as well. I just feel desperately sorry for police officers trying to do their job. They've been sabotaged from within <clears> their own organisation.